Now let's take a look at Make. Make is a build automation tool on Unix. It was written about 40 years ago, and it's really the default tool for automating builds, installations, and other workflows in Unix. Uh, there are also more modern versions of Make available, things like CMake, SnakeMake, and uh, a and few others. But knowing Make is actually really useful because it's still the default tool and it's incredibly useful when you have uh, large workflows uh, on, on Unix. So what it is, is it helps you automate build processes. My own background is in computational astrophysics and I was working with a code called Anzo. It's a galaxy formation code. And uh, around 10 years ago, when I stopped working with it, at the time Anzo had a lot of source files. So 400 plus uh, C++ files, six C files, 121 uh, Fortune 77 files, 10 Fortune 90 files, 48 header files. So here you have a large collection of uh, six or 700 files that you need to compile into an executable. And the way you do this is you take uh, most of these source files and each one of them you convert into an object file. So there are many hundred files that you need to convert from uh, the source in its uh, human readable uh, language to a machine uh, level object file. And then take all these object files and you compile them uh, into an executable. So you take all these object files, you link them to a number of external libraries, things like MPI, IO libraries, math libraries, etc. And then you compile the final executable. So basically there are many hundred steps here that uh, you, need to, you need to take in order to compile the final executable. So let's say you do this once and you have your executable, you build your program, and now you modify one of, uh, let's say, C++ um, source files. So of course, because you modify just a single file, it does not make any sense to recompile the entire program because the entire compilation takes hours and hours. You need to compile many hundred files. So what you do in this case, you need to recompile just uh, the single file that you modified. You have now a new object file from that. And then you take that new object file, take all the previous object files and any external libraries, and you combine them into a single executable. Uh, so if you have many hundreds, hundreds of files, of course, you really want to automate this process. And this is where Make becomes uh, really useful. So the idea is uh, that in Make, you have a number of targets, and you're building these targets. So a target example would be the final binary. And then uh, these targets, each one of them, has a number of dependencies. And make, when you run it, it takes a look at the timestamps of the files of all the sources and the target. And if it finds that one of the sources is newer than the target, then it will only do the tasks necessary to rebuild the target from that updated uh, source. Make can actually be used for many different workflows. And another simple example I can give you, these slides that you see on your screen, they were actually uh, created with make. So what I have, I have a bunch of input files. Each input file was created in LaTeX markup language. And um, each LaTeX file I'm converting into a PDF and then I'm merging all those PDFs to form the final PDF. And then this final PDF is uploaded with uh, any additional data and sample codes. Uh, well, actually I pack it into a zip file and then this zip file is uploaded uh, to a remote server. And all that workflow is automated via make. So what I do is when I change one of the, uh, something in one of the slides, I type make, and then make will figure out what it needs to do so that it gets the final PDF, then packs it into a zip file and uploads it to a remote server. So let me give you an example. Here we have three Fortune 90 files, really simple code. We have the main code, main.f90. And here we have uh, two numbers, A and B, and then two external uh, procedures, add and subtract. And these external sub uh, procedures are actually, each one of them is implemented in its own file. So we have the file add.f90 and then sub.f90. In order to compile this code, what you do is you typically take main.f90, you compile it into an object file main.o, and you do the same for the other two. So here is your workflow. You compile each one of them into into an object file, and then you take all these object files 
and link them to any possible uh, external libraries that you might need, and then build the final executable that in this, this case I'm going to call main. And then on the left, you see the actual commands that you run. So you run the three gfortran-c followed by the fortran90 uh, uh, source file commands. Each one of them will take, let's say, add.f90, convert it into add.o, uh, add then we get sub.o, and then main.o. And then you take all these object files and compile them into an executable. So the entire compilation process is four commands. OK, to write the make file, you create a file called make file, and usually the default is capital M, and then all other letters are lowercase. You create it in the same directory where you have the source code, where you have main.f90 and other Fortran files. And then uh, in each line, you have a target. So the target is main. And then main, the final executable, depends on these object files. Then in the second line, you have tab. So tab is very important. You cannot have spaces here. It's the very special syntax for make files. Tab followed by the actual uh, rule. So the rule is the command that you run to create the target from the sources, from the dependencies. OK, so uh, in order to create dependency main.o, here's the rule for main.o. Uh, it depends on main.f90, and here's the command that you run to create main.o from main.f90, and so on. So for each object file, this is this is its dependency, and this is how you create this um, this object file, this this target. Then we also have a special uh, target called clean, and this target does not have any dependencies. So that means that every time you type make clean, this rule is going to run. So when you type make clean, what this will do, this will simply remove all object files and the final executable called main. OK, so the format is for each, uh, for each rule, essentially, you have a target. You have its dependencies or its sources, prerequisites, if you want to call them. Then in the second line, you have tab and the rule used to create this target. Uh, when you type make, you're going to run the, uh, the you're going to create the first target in the make file, or you can say make followed by any individual target like make clean or make add.o. Okay, as you can see, there is some redundancy in the previous make file because here you have a lot of similar rules for creating object files from uh, F90 files. And you can actually automate that by using makefile wild masks. So here, instead of uh, typing the rules for each individual object file, I'm saying that if you want to create anything with uh, the .o extension, for example, main.o, you will need a main.f90 file. And this is the rule you're going to use to uh, create this target. So here we have gfortran minus c, and then dollar sign hat sign means all prerequisites of this rule. So these is going to be replaced by the list of dependencies of, of this rule. OK, so the exercise that I'm going to ask you to do in the interactive Zoom session is uh, to create a make file that automates compilation of the serial, shared memory, and distributed memory codes. Remember, we compiled these three versions of the same code in C. Uh, the serial code, the OpenMP code, and the MPI code. What I wanted to do, I wanted to create a make file that will automate this build so that instead of typing those long commands on the left, you would type much shorter commands on the right. For example, make serial, or make OpenMP, or make MPI.